How's it going, Banger TV fans? Dylan Gowan here. Welcome back to another installment of Overkill Reviews, Banger TV's weekly heavy metal review show. I am back in my practice space giving you guys another progressive metal review, and today I'm going to be talking about one of the most influential metal bands from the United States. It's the sixth studio album by Baroness called Stone, which comes out this Friday on Abraxan Hymns. Baroness was formed in 2003 in Savannah, Georgia by guitarist and frontman John Baisley. In early 2007, they inked a deal with indie label Relapse Records, and under that label's banner, Baroness released three critically acclaimed albums. Following this successful stint, they decided to take their destiny into their own hands, forming their own independent label, Abraxan Hymns. Stone will be the band's third album under their own independent label. The band has been very consistent, releasing an album every four years, and Baroness is right on time with Stone. So my question going into this review is, how did the challenging writing process affect the songs this time around, and how does Stone differ between all the other records? Well, let's get into the review. After re-listening to Baroness's entire discography before delving into Stone, it becomes evident that this album represents the band's most audacious endeavor to date. It successfully showcases the quintessential Baroness sound of sludge metal with progressive tendencies, but with a fresh perspective of exploration. Stone boldly pushes the boundaries of what the band has been steadily evolving toward, resulting in a collection of songs that are notably more experimental than found in their previous albums. Take for example the second song, Last Word, a song with a ton of driving riffs, solid grooves, and with a captivating and imaginative mix of atmospheric, psychedelic, and heavy elements. What truly separates the song apart from previous releases is the band's remarkable ability to structure and weave together all these diverse components. I would describe this song as if you took the heaviness of the blue record with the driving melodies of purple and made them a bit more complex. Another song that I really enjoyed was Magnolia, a very atmospheric track that delves into heavy elements and the energy slowly picks up and it steadily increases throughout. Throughout the track, they're able to have these two contrasting sounds playing back and forth without sounding repetitive. And it's one of those tracks that has a lot of peaks and valleys. This is an album that immediately hooks you in from the start and you just get completely lost in it. The combination of both John and Gina's vocals are really impressive on this release, and I feel like they were able to really showcase their powerful, dynamic vocal abilities and held nothing back on this release. You still get the moments of spoken word combined with growling, shouting vocal harmonies, and the trading different melodic passages, and the way that they're able to trade between all these different techniques really helps convey the overall themes of each song and makes the immersive storytelling all that more real. One song of note that shows their talents has to be the track Shine, a very hypnotic and chaotic track that perfectly captures the sound of the overall album, especially when the track reaches the chorus which showcases the amazing harmonies between John and Gina. Also, John throughout this record really tried something different. The ideas like the bluesy inspired vocal approach and Beneath the Rose and the spoken word part in choir, it really works well within these songs and how they add another layer of suspense throughout the whole entire album. 
Another noticeable difference between this album and their last is that Gina is more in the forefront of the band, which is great because her style really suits the band, and it shows that the group is really trusting her to become more of a creative force within Baroness. Sebastian is one of those drummers who just knows how to play the right parts and to help elevate the ideas presented in stone. It's not overly flashy, but it doesn't need to be. The choices he made on this release is when it comes to the beats and the fills are all cleverly placed, and it really solidifies himself as a very underrated drummer within metal. Beneath the Rose is one of those songs that demonstrates his abilities on building on the intensity of a high energy song. There's this really cool section where he jumps from influences of punk and thrash inspired drumming, adding in some blast beats, and then adding some elements of grindcore towards the end. Another highlight on this album would be his playing on the track Under the Wheel, where he's playing with the timing and adding a few fills to kind of give this song a more hypnotic shape. It takes two minutes roughly to build into one of the heaviest riffs on the album, but it's worth the wait because there's a lot of intention behind how the song is structured. A notable difference is that this album sounds so much better production-wise than the band's previous iterations. You know, it did add to the band's charm on previous records, but I was hoping that eventually that they would have a release like this one, where this time around everything is so well balanced. Everything sounds way more crisp, and the bass isn't overly distorted, and it's way more audible this time. Nick Jost is a very strong bassist, and to hear his parts really cut through the mix and have him really stand out throughout some of the moments on this record really makes this album a much more enjoyable listen. If I had to think of a negative point that people might say about this record is that it doesn't quite reach the same level of heaviness or aggressiveness compared to previous albums. It's rather an amalgamation of everything great about the band. There are plenty of heavy moments scattered throughout, but if you were expecting to hear another version of the Red Album or Blue Record, then this wouldn't be the record for you. This is Baroness trying not to repeat themselves, and this album shows that the band are taking uh, a lot of risks within this release, and they're trying to branch out. Overall, this is the best album I've heard from Baroness. The band has reached another level and continues to push themselves creatively with each release, and this is no exception to the rule. They continue to perfect their already unique sound, and I'm going to be checking out their show in Toronto, and I'm really stoked to hear how these songs are going to be translated in a live setting. This album comes out this Friday, so you need to pick up a copy because this is easily a four and a half out of five skulls. All right, time for some shout outs. Here are a couple of prog releases that came out this year, which I would recommend to fans of Baroness. First up, I would recommend Witch Ripper with their new album, which came out March 3rd on Magnetic Eye Records. A second, I would recommend Grant the Sun Voyage, which was an independent release that came out June 9th. The Anchor It is another great one. It All Begins With Loneliness came out uh, June 23rd on Willow Tip Records. And finally, I would recommend Sewing with their new album Memorial, which came out September 1st uh, on Silver Lining Music. It feels like that band would go really well with Baroness, even though they sound very different from each other, but it feels like the fans of Sewing really gravitate towards the sound of Baroness and vice versa. So it feels like it's a perfect um, blend of two different styles of prog that would be really cool on a, on a tour bill. Let me know what you think of Stone when it comes out this Friday. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out some of the other reviews that we've got going on. Check out Riley's review of Cryptopsy she did a couple of days ago. And I'll see you guys in a couple of days to talk about another album I've been really looking forward to for a very long time. It's a prog takeover this week on Banger TV, so see you guys on Friday.